This is a small practice sword. It's one third of a bow ken. Bow ken is a sword that lives inside the dojo and is used by black belts and white belts to practice sword cutting and stabbing techniques. These swords lived all their life in the dojo and were treated like they were real swords with very sharp blades. They're actually made of wood, but we treat them as if they were real swords. This is made in a very traditional way, uh, Buddha way, martial arts way, and it's dressed as if it was real. This uh, scabbard is always on it. There is a handle for you to be able to hold it properly. There's a bottom part, the sharp part, and there's the top part. So it's never held, it's never held uh, upside down. There's a slight curve to it too, because it did came from a, come from a sword. Uh, so let's see what's inside. <clears throat> I'll teach you how to, to use this. Inside there is supposed to be a blade. So inside the cover is a blade. In this case, it's wood with supposedly a sharp side, a sharp edge here, and a back here, the back of the sword. So this is sort of what it looks like, and you hold it this way with two little fingers, and relaxed three fingers. Now I'll show you how to use it. But and it's used with proper footwork. Nothing much more than proper footwork. Now when you take this out of here it's in public, that's a no no because there there's a protocol for using it in public. So only in the dojo can you uh take this out of its the cover. Uh, let's see if I can put it back in. Nope. I need two hands to put it back in. Okay. Now they're very useful as tanto. Small hand sword. And the way to hold them is with your two little fingers as you would a sword. This bottom side is very round, it's supposed to be very sharp. So you treat it as a very sharp object. Just as you would any sword, I banded this silver on top just to show you the top portion of the sword, which can be, uh, you can touch the top portion, but try not to touch the rounded edge which symbolizes a really, really very sharp knife or sword. So this is how you hold it. This is kept to your center, right here, right where your belly is. Never really goes to the sides. It never really swings from side to side. Although if I had to swing it from side to side, I would bring my whole hips to do that action, meaning this sword stayed in the center. Me, so if I'm moving my hips, and the sword stays in the center, and I do get a side to side motion, don't I? Side to side, same as lateral. Lateral. I would move my feet to get my to get that uh, 45 degree angle from this sword, keeping it in the center. 
Now stabbing would be the same principles, everything in your center. So what I would do to get the knife, this is the Mawai, this is the distance between me and the, me and the target. This is the distance between me and the target. So from this distance, I back off a little bit in and back. So that's my target. And this is what I want to bring to my target. The way to bring this to your target is to bring your whole body forward uh, like this. Not really moving this knife forward or any other motion. The only place really this knife can go is up and down. You can make a strike from the top down. But notice that when I start this way, when I start this way, I can't even see my feet. Right foot forward, left foot back. When I start this way, I end up with my right foot forward and my left foot back. So let's see. I'm gonna pull this into the center. From four, this is what the uh, dummy will see. The the uh, receiver will see. I'll move it all into the center with my feet. Move my foot back just to get a left foot forward stance, and come into your space with my right uh, right foot forward. There we are. Distance between you and me uh, would be here. And then I would pull everything to the center and move one step back. That's where I could start. Now my left foot is forward. My left hand is forward. That's where I could start my forward attack by bringing everything to the center and follow and bringing my right foot forward, following with my left foot. That's what you would see if you were being attacked. One, two, one, two. And I like to say pump, pump. So from here, pump, pump, and uh, fall forward. Falling forward also is a motion that brings me closer to you. Pump, pump, pump. Pump up. The pump up is a funny thing. It just means right foot forward would be falling forward and the back foot will follow. So pump pump. Oops, sorry. There you are. This never moved. It's always been to the center. Ready? Simple pump pump. Again. Pump pump. Now to move backwards to give some space between me and the target. Bring everything in, my left foot's forward, my right left foot's forward, my left hand's forward. Then I go in and pump, pump, back. Falling forward, pump, pump. Remove, falling forward and pump, pump. So, <coughs> That finishes a stab. That's what a stab should be. Your whole center going into your, your whole center going into your partner. As in, uh, hi. And, yup. That's an unbendable arm. It doesn't really bend. It doesn't really go too far forward. You can. Hip. Do going forward a little bit more, you know, more intentions, more striking. You could do it, but really, it's just bringing your center to your partner. It just so happens there's a sword in front of you, so I'll bring my center. Just so happens that sword is there, and uh, because it's there, it stabs my partner. 
Here's a uh, forward cut. So the kind of advanced, a little bit more advanced. Breathe through your top of your head, and you kind of swing your whole body down. It's the same motion, except I'm making an angle with it, my body. Other side. Same. Other side. Same. <clears throat> so that's kind of more fantastic. But really, sword never leaves your center. Keep it there. Walk to your partner. And do it with a technique. A uh, technique meaning you start this way, you end this way. Pump, pump. Very, very simple thing. Later, we'll <coughs> show you when you're dead. When you died is when this struck you. You're going to have to know when this strikes you. So when this strikes you is when, when you get hit. And if you know that exact moment, then you could use the when as a tool so that you can actually evade this attack. So when evading, that's when all of that action happens where you can uh, when you cannot get killed. So that's first lesson. Uh, there's really nothing to it. Uh, knife in the center, always stays in the center, because that's where you, all your power is, right in the center of your body. Right here. Uh, never goes up, elbows down. Everything down, body straight. And look at my elbows are down. Body straight and pom pom. That's a good attack. Good basic attack. So there you are. Uh, next lesson evasion uh, from that attack. And then maybe later uh, removal of that weapon from the attacker's hands. All very easy to do uh, and really no fantastic that's about it okay uh, good lesson let's bow Tomo arigato gozaimasu and it's about our partner he doesn't bow because he's a box all righty Good job.